How you doing, YouTube? Matt and Matt's Beer Reviews. Back with a little bit of uh, shit mystery beer. In the form of, I have no idea what. All they know is this is a beer. Well, I hope it's a beer. Actually, it could be something else. And it comes courtesy of my boy, Jerome. Uh, I use the word boy loosely. He's trolling me with this spudsy, scumsy, whatever you want to call it, wrapping on these mystery beers. So, you know, usually I gotta go through the whole shtick of the mystery beers. Do I like the wrapping and I love it? This one, hot garbage. But we'll see how the beer fares. Hopefully the beer's better than the wrapping. Uh, hazies, you know, um, sweet hazy. If this isn't like an overly sweetened residual sugar hazy, I'm not sure what is going to be that. Um, just because of the tone of it. It has that rich kind of orange glow, but it's, well, is a hazy beer by no stretch of the imagination. You can see through it. I can glean a lot of decent light through it, so it's dark. At the same time, not ultra hazy. Usually those tend to lean a bit sweeter. Um, index finger, infinitely creamy pill. We had a little bit of rocky edge on it, though. And then pretty uniform bubbles throughout. So she looks the part of a hazy. Let's get a nose. Yeah, this is Orangina. This is Sunny D. This is Tang. This is where this is leaning. It's giving you those big kind of candied kid drink Capri Sun kind of orange juice vibes. Um, I mean, if there is a little bit of bittering on one end, sure, fine, so be it, but it really is just leaning all that orange, all that grapefruit, all the pineapple kind of citrus leaning kind of fruitiness. Not necessarily a bad thing, but man, I have a real big double hankering now, or double, not hankering, hankering means I want it, um, double, uh, reinforcement of it being sweet, because man, that nose smells sweet. Let's dive in. Cheers. Okay. Thank insert deed of deity of choice here. Thank that person that there is some kind of bittering component to this. It's a sweet beer. It is very sweet. It's about as sweet as I thought it was to be. I just didn't nose and get that little bit of bitterness on the other end of things. To not balance, but at least bring something to the under end of the spectrum so it wasn't just sweet on sweet on sweet. Mm. That's a gigantically sweet beer. I'm trying to think of who this is. Hmm. So it's all those citrus, OJ, pineapple, grapefruity vibes. It's all that you got in the nose. More in the taste. It's a little bit more organic in the, in the taste than the nose led you to believe. It's, it's, it's still kind of leaning towards that kind of orangina kind of a spectrum but there is a little bit kind of richness a little bit of pulpiness a little bit of depth to it somewhere outside of just a basic kind of citrus but then you get all that sweetness that kind of makes you want to go back in that direction there's a bittering component generically green bittering on the other end of things that it just adds an absolute needed bit of a pull in the opposite direction even though it's not balanced in any form or fashion done and done so what is this Oh, this is a hard one for a couple of reasons. One, it's an IPA. Is it a double or a single? I'm going to call this a double IPA. Here's why. I think this is a small brewery. Um, and I think more often than not, what small breweries do is they kind of make a beer. They think of a beer. They order the labels to get the labels in and then they can it. That's where you usually get your attenuation issues. If it comes a little bit um, sweeter, that means it kind of under attenuated. It's going to knock the alcohol down. Well, they're not going to print reprint new labels. So I don't think this is a high ABV beer. I think this is probably mid sixes. But I think the label on this is going to say like seven and change because they expected it to finish a little bit higher. Hence the amount of sweetness in here and resi residual sugar. Um, so you get double IPA. I think the label is going to say eight and change, but this is probably. Or actually, no, seven, high sevens and change. Um, but it's probably more like 6% in real life. There's nothing in there besides the core four. It, it, the only way I could see this being outside of core four is there's some kind of sweetened, sweetened agent in here. It doesn't come off honey-like. It doesn't come off lactose-like. It just tastes like overt residual sugar. That's pretty much it. I don't know who this is. It tastes familiar. Let's put it that way. But I don't know who it is. Let's dive in. See what she's got. As far as like, it's not my kind of beer. It's just a little bit too sweet. I'd like four ounces of this and move on is my kind of take on this beer. So what do we have? Fuck me. Fuck me. 
I'm an asshole. I'm a fucking asshole. You wanna know why? I've only had two beers from Nightmare Brewing, and I swear to you, I swear to you on my whatever, that I was going to say, this kind of reminds me of a Nightmare Beer. I don't know why I didn't say it. Just because I only had like two beers from these guys. Um, but it just gave me like Nightmare Vibes, so I didn't say it. It's Nightmare Brewing. This is their exposure. It's an Imperial Indie Pale Ale, a Cryo Mosaic, and Cryo Citra. It is 10.1% they're calling out on that. That doesn't surprise me. This beer is not 10.1%. It is not. There's no way... Uh, there's zero fucking way this beer is 10%. They ordered the labels. This beer on attenuated. It just became a sugar bomb. And it probably finished at close to 65 7%. But they ordered the labels for a 10% beer. It just didn't finish. That's exactly what happened here. So I'm absolutely okay with what I said. And that's pretty much it. You know? It's just too sweet. It's overly sweet. It's just, it's literal, like, juice sweet, crystallized juiciness, not in an overly, overtly positive way. I mean, it gives you a lot of that, that, that synthetic fruit juiciness, your tangs, your kind of orangina, your sunny D's. So if those are the things you dig, let's cut to that cheese. Is it one of the better double IPAs that I've had out of the late or triple IPAs? No. Uh, just way too sweet for me. Value and availability, their price points usually bonkers expensive. Like, I'm guessing this is probably a $20 plus four pack, which is just absolutely insane. They do all their stuff out of like 12% beer project. Yeah, 12% distributes this. So, I mean, their prices are crazy high, um, but you can find them. I mean, it is what it is. And leave you with, if you like, what will you like this? If you like new school hazy IPAs and you just want sugar, sweet sugary juiciness, that's what you're going to get here. I know a lot of people dig that, so I'm not going to sit here and say this is a poopy beer for you. I'm just saying it's not so much a beer for me. And if you like a beer that says it's 10%, but is more like 7.5%, then you'll like this. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoy mystery beers as much as I do. If you do, reach out. I'm always down for some mystery beers. Can't do them without you. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice mystery beer yourself right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers. Yeah. <sighs>